What it do, my guys? From Resident Diesel, I'm Timmy D. From WMXX2000, I'm Will. From Reaper6865, I'm Malachi. And welcome to the What's Poppin' Podcast, everybody. The show with explosive questions and even more explosive guests. And uh, today, we are joined by Xavier Adams from Exebia. Uh, a three-time tournament winning Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops uh, player in which their career includes everything from being a regular at TwitchCon to playing with big names on the scene like Gutter Magic and Rico Suave. I, I hope I say that right. Rico Suave? Absolutely Rico not. Suave, Suave. 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 Yes, Suave. And, and many more uh, like them. Okay. Streaming on Twitch and TikTok with live events, which you can find on his social nearly every week. Xavier Adams, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you with technology before we get started? Um, I am magical with technology. Let's just say <laughs> Well, I that. guess we're going right. to find out today, these, right? <laughs> these fingers work keyboards like no other. Hmm. I like it. Were well, you ready to get started? Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm going to ask the first question, and this goes for everybody, all right? Will, I want you to tell me first, what is, right now, what is the most impressive piece of technology out on the marketplace right now? Um, I would probably have to say it's probably the various smartphones that are out there now, because again, just having the world at your fingertips, the ability that you can do just about anything from the pocket of your pants, it's just... Technology right. has increased so far compared to what we were even just like 10, 15 years ago when like just using the internet was like kind of, you know, it was a luxury. Now it's just right. become so normalized and it's almost like water. even doing this, like even just right. having like being like, able look, to look, look at everybody states. in their talk shows now, right? Like yeah. online talk shows. And it, it's crazy. Um, Let me ask you a question just to piggyback on that. Do you think it's, would you consider it like a window into the world, the mm -hmm. the phone Definitely. that we have? Definitely. That, and how how would you describe that for someone who doesn't understand? Because it's just kind of like catered to everything that we've become used to these days. Now, again, with just being always on and able to communicate with each other, the fact that you know, fortunately, it does get taken into some toxic places, like with work environments of like, yeah. oh, you have to answer this email at. 8 p.m. even though you stop working at 5 p.m. right just the fact that we're always in contact with each other now yeah yeah and it's crazy to think that like just just like what 15 years ago it was wildly different 2005 mm -hmm. was not 2023 you know what i mean i was just a kid in it and it's like we didn't have we had the flip razors that's what my mom and dad had and mm -hmm. now i'm walking around with an iphone uh, and don't judge me iphone 12 you know but uh you know, I was going to get the 14. But Xavier, I think you yeah. got the 14. And le speaking of Ex Xavier, let me ask you a question. What do you think the most impressive piece of technology is out on the marketplace right I mean, now? Right now, it would definitely be the AI generations um, for the most part. You know, they're they're making music. They're doing art. They're, hell, my LinkedIn profile picture is an AI, <laughs> is an AI photo of myself. You know, right. and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I could have paid a couple hundred dollars to go get a professional photo, or I just paid the ten dollars to get that one. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And it, True. It, it's beautiful. So I, so I would say AI generation. Well, let me ask you a question uh, about AI. Do you are you afraid of it? Nah, it was coming. Why? I'm ready for it. What 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 are you ready for? Like specifically, what what about AI <laughs> are you ready for? <laughs> He welcomes our <laughs> robot overlords. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a I know, right? <laughs> like, bro, what are you I, talking about? <laughs> it's it, it's coming. It's automation. Everything's gonna be simpler. You know, there's nothing we can do to control it. They're gonna try and make our lives easier. It's um, true. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. It's, it's, yeah, it's I mean, <laughs> it. I feel like there's pros and cons because I, I was just telling Will earlier uh, before the show, like. On my YouTube, I've been working really, really hard, you know, and I work really, really hard in this short period of time, produce all this content, and then I just put it out and I automate it. You know, I don't have to be there to, to release every single piece of content every two days, you know. I just put it in a schedule and then I'm done. I don't have to worry about it anymore, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's going to simplify a lot of the um, 
tiresome work. Yeah. And I, I can see where the concern is, but ultimately a lot of the corporations, a lot of big businesses, they're going to go that way because that's less money to be paid out. Yeah, that's true. And especially, and I won't say anybody specific, but like big corporations are changing right now. You know, there's a lot of shifts and they are getting rid of a lot of people. And I do believe it, it could have something to do with like the growth of technology, the expansion, aggressive expansion of mm -hmm. AI, you know, that it could be taking a lot of jobs. And that's why a lot of these big corporations are having these major, major restructures because, hey, we don't need you anymore, copywriter. We have an AI bot that does that for us. You know, right. yeah, yeah. And uh, with that being said, Malachi, let us know what is the most impressive piece of technology out there. Honestly, um, like I said, it's more towards what Xavier said and stuff. It's just everything that's pretty much impressive right now. Like that, let's just like even say about not even say about the AI generation. Like, look what we have. In fact, I saw a guy down the street riding a skateboard with one wheel. This zooming down the street. Oh, like one of those. Um, like it was like one wheel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's one wheel, cool. just freaking yeah. going down like China. Most spikes, the most spikes when I was working at a uh, freaking that one job. I'm not gonna say, but um, yeah. most of the bikes that we sold there were like electronic and like electricity they were not the pedal you could just zoom all the way that through that's everything. how i like them and stuff you know? look at all the um yeah that look at all the freaking joys that we made the freaking helicopter joys that we freaking fly around every single second oh the drones and again like i said pointing to xavier night yeah the jones pointing to xavier's ai and not even like the big ais look at the little ones that we make the toy ones ai pets that actually yeah. have like it's a thousand personalities that are catchy yeah, getting tuned to point. yours. That's a good point. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, like it's do you guys like remember uh, Tamagotchis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's what it reminds when... me of Malachi. Tamagotchis. <laughs> yeah. Freaking technology is going to get to that point. Because I'm not going to believe, I'm not going to believe that uh, AIs are going to take everyone's job. I don't believe that. Because at the end of the day, if that happens and people are going to riot, over that yeah. shit <laughs> and that's gonna be i mean real. that's what the uh it's gonna be a like, writer's a strike time. in hollywood is uh, yeah. going on yeah, that, right now yeah that's yeah. what's happening right now like literally yeah. i hope they yeah. get back to work that's why <laughs> to be honest you don't know, get it I twisted robots gonna replace the yeah robots gonna replace the jobs that are just like too hard to do you know what i'm saying like right freaking i don't know like more like automatic stuff like you know how we always have those uh construction workers using the forklifts and everything robots could place that and but, yeah scoop it up exactly like and put it construction in, in general yeah. can just be wiped like we don't have to use humans yeah. for construction anymore you know it can all be machines yeah. and robots like don't get it twisted people people have to be there to take care of the machines just in case it does break down or right. something happens supervision is always because <laughs> you can't put your you know? Yeah, you can't put your whole faith in the whole machine. Like, like it's not the, that's why you can't even put your faithful in person. Like, you right. have to watch them yeah. and stuff. And, it's like, don't get it twisted. Based. Yeah, they're still going to give little jobs to the people. Like, like I said, like the big machines, I believe it will be get place for AIs. But, like, you still, still doing like the fucking jackhammer going. Duh, 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 duh. I feel like. It's like, what the fuck? All right. And then. In it's the future, they probably use a laser by then. And it's going right into the <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, freaking that, like ground. Who needs to smash concrete <laughs> when you can burn it? <laughs> uh, obviously. My, my the most know, right? piece of, it's like, burning like this if it was me, the most impressive piece of technology that I can think about right now in the marketplace is the Asus ROG Ally. That thing is a laptop in your hands, and I'm not talking about a cell phone. I'm talking about something this big, kind of like a switch, right? Or a, 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 a Steam Deck, right? Except on crack. You know what I mean? This is the Ferrari of all handheld gaming uh, devices. <laughs> the, the Asus ROG Ally is so damn impressive. It runs Windows 11. And you can even download Windows Mini onto it. Dude, the thing, you can do your homework on it. You can do your work on it. And it's all in the, in the palm of your hands. And it yeah. runs 
powerfully too. This thing is badass touchscreen and it's got a keyboard on it. It's amazing. If you haven't seen the Rog Ally, please go check that out because it's it's but can awesome. it it's run sick. Doom? It can run Doom. It can run any fucking game. It can run Harry Potter. It like literally, yeah, Hogwarts Legacy. I I mean, this game is this this handheld is insane. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Um and and if, and if you're looking question. forward to like what what? Uh, what the hell? <laughs> Freaking sorry. A real question. Sorry. I was thinking about that when you was talking about handheld things. I was thinking, did, did, do you guys think that they will ever make another PSP? That's what I was just about to say. Uh, go get a Rog Ally yeah. if you're Something if you can't wait for lines. PlayStation to to come out with one. Because I just want a PlayStation handheld <laughs> again. I see that face, Xavier. Don't make that face at us. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no Xavier's like, nah. We, we need the triangle PSP and the track. square and the circle and the X, okay? I'm I'm, I'm done with the letters. It was a, it was so a pretty good letters. thing. PSP was a nice thing. Like, it was a nice thing. PSP it was, was nice. And it had, like, all the games. Back in the day. Mm. It's time is gone. <laughs> yeah, so it would be too, good. It would be good if they remade it because all the technology. I'm just, really, look, it would be good now since all the technology in a year. I'm pretty sure they would make it amazing now. Like they, well if they made a PSP a, right yeah. now, they would make they make money. It's like whatever. Like PSP, yeah, PSP is to, to make money, <laughs> and like I feel like I would buy one because it would probably be amazing if they made it remade it. <laughs> I like. You I, know, I feel like it will. Like I feel horrible, like they're making it now. Horrible <laughs> graphics at 30 FPS, mm. <laughs> and, then, and then only their exclusive. <laughs> You're telling me you want to pay, and it's PlayStation. It's so probably going to so charge like 700 bucks. Yeah, and 500 <laughs> bucks, same as the PS5, just to play Spider-Man 2 at lower frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, also like, like how the, PS, the go, PS5 yeah. was, like they're, they're not going to be available to like get your hands on for like exactly. a year. Exactly. Yeah, I know, like, right? All, all the scalpers are going to buy like the first year, and then they're going to be double, triple they're, they're, the price. It's going to be you're exactly not going to be able happened. to go into a store and buy <laughs> one for at least it, a it's year. It's going to be the exact same thing as, as PS5 and PSVR2. You can't yeah. find one anywhere. No. And they're like, hey, it was released back in March. Cool. Where is it? Like, I just want it. That's all I want. I want to put that on my head. I want to have 4K virtual reality. But you guys are bullshitting me. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, Will, ask the next question. Okay. Uh, up next, uh, what are your IT horror stories, either for yourself personally or doing tech support for someone else? Uh, Timmy. Uh horror stories now i could give you one that i have personally that i did for somebody um and that was for odie right my my dear fiance uh i was setting up her her area and i was messing with the the modem and the router like the the two boxes for the internet and i go over to the modem router and i unplug it i i i put everything aside all the cords are separated everything's organized perfectly right and i separate everything i move the desk i move all the furniture i get everything back on there but now it's time to plug the internet back up right i and short long story short i clipped the uh one of the cables to the coaxial so the internet wasn't coming through so I was spending hours and hours and hours and hours trying to figure out like, hey, how can I make my internet work? You know, because I feel like I'm doing the right fucking job. Eventually, I realized the coaxial, yada, yada. I ended up replacing everything for like 600 bucks. I got like uh, all Netgear Nighthawk stuff, like professional grade <laughs> internet. Upgrade. Uh, yeah, a total upgrade all because I couldn't figure it out that it was just a coaxial cable. That's a horror story. Six hundred dollars yeah. later, that's a horror story. What about you, Xavier? Oh <laughs> uh, well, you know, working for Geek Squad, I have a plethora. Oh damn, a whole bunch. Oh geez, that's whole, you, like, you could probably do an hour of just what, horror stories. What's your favorite story? <clears throat> my favorite, no, my favorite event is you know people walking up. To, with a brand new computer and be like, it won't turn on. And then you're like, well, have you tried the power button? Of course I've tried the power button. I tried the power button, it comes on. And they're like, well, how did you do that? And you Magic. know, it's, and it's a professional place. So you can't be like, you're an idiot. 
So you have to come up with this convoluted you can't. around the way case of being like, well, maybe it just didn't have, but no. Um, the way I, I always heard that described is I you say it's an, it's, a, it's an ID10T problem. And yeah, there's too many times where I've had mm. a guy in a very nice suit come up and be like, here, my IT department couldn't fix this. I'm just like, sir, you're in a Best Buy. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what are you paying them? <laughs> hey, my eyes look, look at him very, look up very slowly, like, what the hell? But um, you just open it up and it's just like dust, you know? <laughs> there, the, the, <clears throat> the amount, the audacity that people have to come into Geek Squad in a public place with just porn. Just porn. I know, right? It's right? crazy. Like a guy come. I have, I have three short stories, but they all kind of blend in together. Let's hear him. A guy walks in, broken phone, and he's just like, "Oh, can we get this fixed, or can you get the information?" I was like, "Yeah, sure. I can check that out." And I'm just looking at the phone. And he's just like, "Yeah, I watch porn on that too much." And I was just like, "What? What do you say?" Ayo, and he's just like it's like yeah. a, it's like a slap. It's like, hey, can I see your computer? Yeah, it's broken. Yeah. I watch porn on it too much. Oh, yeah. So what? I'm just like, All right, <laughs> let me take it to the back. I take it to the back. We deem it's not fixable. I come out. He has another phone watching porn in the booth. It's like, bro, and I'm just like, I don't like right, porn. No shame. Here. And you also can't do that here. So. It's time for you to go. Pornhub's too safe for me, sir. I get um, mine on the black that. web. <laughs> what? What? Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say, buddy. Um, I don't like a, produced porn. There was what? another one that there was a laptop. I swear, old as can be, had to be from Windows XP generation. Oh, jeez. Um, so you're dealing with a dinosaur. Dealing with a hell of a dinosaur. Open it. It's a it's a lady, a fairly old black lady's um, laptop. We open it up, dust, just full on dusty. Um, open turn up it the on. CD train. <laughs> yeah, turn it on. Cropped four by four photos of I'm hoping her husband. Elephant out trunk just just oh, on the full God. screen just cropped. And then uh, I was in a petty mood that day. I bring it out to her, screen open. Hey, this works just fine. And you know what she does? Oh, thanks. And then walks away, not acknowledging anything. Ma'am, there is a <laughs> four by four I cut of a man on the screen. <laughs> and you are just ignoring this. This man's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> And then as like it, as that picture came up, I just look up like so slowly, like oh my fucking god! <laughs> <laughs> it's just the audacity. Like if we're doing data transfers, we're gonna go through the files to transfer. And right. if, and if you're a lawyer, a nice, very lawyer proper, and I see big butt white woman on her folder, I'm just. <laughs> I'm like, and I have I'm like, is this a scam? I have to check it up. No, nope. <laughs> he's just just free, just, just free porn, just right there, downloaded. Amazing, that's like gold, dude. That's like treasure. You know what I mean? For who? I see the people that watch this. They're not. They're not. They're not, they're yeah. not our age. It, it's <laughs> not as well. You know, when I was young think. as a kid, when I was young as a kid, I used to remember freaking people in the library watching porn. And like closed cubbies. Oh, I, I remember and I used to be that, like, yeah. dude, that's not even that close. I yeah, know, right? <laughs> like, that so crazy. Close, like, bro. damn. <laughs> Imagine Joe yeah. Biden bringing his computer in, and then I'm, you just I'm, see, I'm really sure. you just see <laughs> porn, porn on his computer, front and open. Dear God. And then You're I like, have to really, pretend. But you really just, can't say nothing about him. He's the president. <laughs> can't say. Uh, yeah, you really Malachi. can't say nothing. No, you just Malachi, get you disappeared. Tell us, tell us your horror story. I don't really have one when it comes to technology. Never really used much except for video games. None of my video games really broke on me like that. I know a game um, broke on me once. What happened there? I mean, it's it's a horror story when me and Tim beat you in Smash. That's oh. true. Yeah, that's true. That, that was mm. a sad day for you. I'm sorry. Repeat that one more time. Oh, I think here we go. Loud and clear. <laughs> you got so triggered. What was that? Oh, what? I, I, I swear. 
There were a few. There was Smash, uh, and then there was the uh, Dragon Ball. Uh, Malachi uh, walked in there, uh, head all high, this big balloon head, thinking uh, he should run us over. Uh, and then um, all of a sudden, that's my yeah. Oh, man. I, I would definitely say that's a horror story. But Malachi, if you don't have a horror story, that's fine. <laughs> oh, wow. We're yeah, good. okay. Sure, buddy. Yeah, okay. He's awake oh, now. Man. I hope you guys have a switch. I swear to God. Right now, at this podcast, I want to fight you both in Super Smash Brothers. That's crazy because, especially you, you'll, Timmy, <laughs> you'll lose. Anyways, um, Will, tell oh. us a horror story that. that you <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, mine is not anywhere near as glorious as the one that we just heard. Was <laughs> just uh, the only thing that I really have is that uh, my grandmother, when I was younger, just. You know, she was like maybe 80, 85 years old at the time. Not tech, not like did not know tech whatsoever. And it's just every time I would go over to her house, it'd be like, well, your uncle sent me pictures and I don't know how to get to them. And it's like, okay, <laughs> like, let's go. Let's go to your America online address and <laughs> yeah, let's right. see. Like, okay, you, do, grandma, do you remember your password? No, you wrote it on a sticky note and left it on my desk, but I lost the sticky note. Okay. So we lost the password, Grandma? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it was just the basic <laughs> things of like, it, nothing was like world-endingly like problematic, but it's just like, okay, going, like, I might as well have been going to my grandma's house with a Geek Squad shirt on. Right. Yeah. Like you, you, you weren't visiting your grandma to visit her. You were visiting yes. her as, as the technician. Yes, exactly. Like, oh, your your VCR isn't like isn't working for those <laughs> for those yeah. of us who remember VCRs, but just like yeah. everything. If was you're like, watching this and you don't remember a VCR, stop watching this and go learn what a VCR is. No, don't stop listening though. Keep this on in the background. Listen to us in the background. Yes, uh, but Malachi, just yeah. Every time going to Grandma's house was a tech issue. Yeah, um, Malachi, go ahead. Let's get us with our third question. <clears throat> all right i'm gonna ask this one for will will what do you think the technology is going to affect the army in the future oh uh, let's like see how is it gonna affect the army in the future um well obviously drones have been probably a big thing for a while now and taking you know live people off of the battlefield and you know giving us the ability to operate without causing as much human casualties but as far as what could be in the future, your it's unknown. Your guess is as good as mine, because God knows, like, is like everything that we see from like military technology is probably at least 10, 15 years behind what they're working on currently. Right. So whatever they ha are working on, you know, today, we're probably not going to know about for at least another decade. So who knows? That's a good point. Right. Zay, that's very you? true because of like uh oh, go ahead yeah freaking like i said <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's very true because issue. like just, uh, just like i will said <laughs> just like will said freaking like uh the stealth bomber wasn't released until what 20 years after they was made it they made it in 1954 that's when they started oh wow and now they didn't release that when yeah, didn't least that until what 2000 something, like, yeah, like, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, 2007 or something like that. Zay, what about you? What do you think? Uh, how do you think the yeah, they technology kept that for is gonna affect for that the military? Long. Um, I mean, they're always it's kind of like the race to the moon where Russia was planning to go to the moon, and the US just like, let's just yeah. jump on it as soon as we can. Uh, we we got to be the first. So like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> everything is just fueled by some kind of competitive nature. Like if somebody's doing it, somebody else we, has to do it. We have to we have to do it first. Like, because mm -hmm. we can talk about how like China and Japan are one hundred percent way advanced in robotics and engineering than we are. Because but that what are they using it for? You know, they're not using it Anime. for. <laughs> they're, not, they're not using it for their warfare. They're using it for everyday home use. I'm sorry. Have you seen Demon Slayer season three, motherfucker? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. what they're using the technology for is for better anime. 
Dude, they already have, they pretty much have Gundams already. Yeah. I know. Life. It's they, fucking they have amazing. A real life Gundam. <laughs> and what are, what are we going to do against Gundams? Shoot at them and then die. And then die. Exactly. <laughs> right. so, um, but no, it just depends on yeah. the. It depends Not real on life. The tank would just go right through that. You're right. Like nanotechnology is a big thing mm. that I hear that they are mm. working on. And as soon as we hit nanotechnology, I think it's just at any point who has the best because the smaller it is, the more intrusive it can get. Yeah, the more intrusive mm-hmm. it gets, that's more information. Yeah, it's gonna really suck. <laughs> yeah. Piggybacking off of that, uh, something like Metal Gear Solid with Fox Die, right? That kind of nanotechnology. Do you think that's gonna come about? Like, oh, oh, yeah, it's gonna oh, suck yeah, eventually. Any, I, I believe any idea that came out in video games, someone in the military was just like, "Yeah, let's do it." Let's <laughs> yeah, they, they look at it, they're like, "Let's, like, make, yeah, no, let's, let's make that." Let's make that. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, yeah, well, that's like, awesome. Let's go make that. <laughs> like, of course they do. Like, their kid comes in like, Dad, look at this, and their their dad's just like, "What? That that killed him with a heart attack? That's a, what did that do? What is that? Do? What's, <laughs> right. the, what's the what's the sign? Bob, that's clear my schedule. Oh, some notes on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. John, President, we, we game, got man. something. Start to do like here. freaking reading the intel. Yeah, no, so getting the intel from the video game, trying to make it logic. <laughs> yeah, like like trying to figure the logic out behind the idea, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's I know I know it's being processed. They just haven't they haven't completed it or they haven't found the right people to test it on yet. I think um I think technology moving forward into the military might be and and, and this is funny that you say Gundam, right? Because like <clears throat> like let's be honest i think it's bipedal walking tanks period like like if we can have think so i think so yeah nuclear equipped with uh with yeah, rail guns yeah yeah think about that kind of I destructive think just power like uh titanfall like, yeah like titan, titanfall, titanfall is good but but think about it's active some... camouflage that you can't sense it on a radar you know what i mean like or on a sonar that would active camouflage along with nuclear capabilities Perfect and rail guns, that would be a really badass piece of military technology that they would probably employ in the middle of nowhere and go take, take out anybody. <laughs> that makes sense to me. It makes sense. Yeah, to technology. Me. Technology. I believe that's probably gonna go to like freaking predator status, like something mm. that's just uh, yeah. unstoppable <laughs> at this point. Freaking camouflage that turns you straight to visible an AI on your shoulder. To shoot you when you're like behind you, like you're trying Beautiful. to sneak up on that person, and the AI I'm just sorry, like and it well, goes I, down. I love the concept <laughs> of Predator, right? Like, but imagine the Punisher with Predator yeah. technology. Yeah, that's a dangerous. <laughs> there's no stopping him. <laughs> you there's, kitty kill. There's no stopping that guy, <laughs> uh, Malachi. <laughs> let's go ahead and hear your answer what do you think the most impressive piece of uh or or what do you think technology in the military is going to look like i know i just said it uh but also like not even like just predator status i also think that sometimes in militaries and wars are going to start moving themselves out in space and they're going to have oh, like yeah. space 100%, battles yeah. and junk <laughs> and but, but then again that, that's gonna be too much god yeah it's going to be too much yeah, for our planet stuck. Yeah. Whew, so, that uh, was sucked. Like I saw a pace of technology it was so freaking crazy and like it was insane because it was uh it was they were still working on it and they haven't tested it out, but it was a um satellite that they made that carries freaking just rods, big ass rods. Yeah, rod from God, rods, like I said. Rod from God that they would shoot from space. Yeah. yeah. Rod yeah, from God. Like, that's <laughs> so bad. Destruction. Yeah, that's just a so, meteor um, coming. St- yeah, that's just a meteor coming. <laughs> let let me let me take this moment to say if you guys are enjoying this so far then please 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 follow us on youtube and spotify where you can find more of this awesome awesome content and all the stuff that somebody like you wants to hear also come say hi with us and stay updated on our official discord just follow the link in the description below um with that being said let's move on to our next segment mr xavier this guy, Xebia. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Let's let's go ahead and do a guest highlight, my friend. 
you have a brand. Can you tell everybody what that brand is? So me, myself, I am the brand. Um, just working on creating more content, streaming more, getting my name out there and bringing the people that I keep close with me. Um, also, I am a social media and account manager. So building up my clientele, building up those that do need help on spreading their influence. And if they have any thing that might be beneficial to those around them or to any community, I'm hoping to provide, to be a conduit for that. And uh, let me ask you a question. What drew you? So, so you say <laughs> that you, you're a social media uh, manager, marketer, um, excuse me. Uh, you say you've got your brand uh, that you've got online. What drew you to all this? What, what got you started in all this? So ultimately um, my friend, Ari, she is a very influential person. Um, not much a content creator, but she would bounce ideas off of me or I would tell her some ideas and she would encourage me to do some videos. And the videos that I did do actually took off a lot more than I thought it was. So it's something that I found that I had a knack for. Um, then meeting connections through the job that I had, someone saw that I had good account management skills and social media management skills. So they offered me a position to help bring their brand up and spread knowledge of their brand, which is what I'm working on currently. So it all just eventually came naturally. And then streaming, of course, just f fell right into place. How would you describe, um, just out of curiosity, how would you describe the initial process of getting all this started uh, and the challenge that came with that? More of the challenge is being comfortable with, hey, I have an idea and I want to put it out and then stop overthinking it. So if you think something is funny, if you have a certain uh, humor and it's for you, but you don't think it's for other people, there's there's a lot of people that share your humor or your ideas more than you think. So just put something out there, go ahead and make the first video, make the second video. Don't worry about views. Don't worry about interactions. Same thing with streaming. Don't worry about viewers. Don't worry about people chatting. Right. Just act, act like you're streaming to your hundreds friend. of thousands of people. Yeah. yeah. Put your content out and just whatever it. It, gets, it gets. Yeah. Just do it because if you're not going to do it, then you're just delaying it and, then no one's going to see anything and you're not going to have anything. So you never, right. You might, know, as well, might as well get you started. You might as well do it. You missed the, you missed the shots you don't take. Right. So, and then I mean, did you have, of, just to say like a lot of like great web series and a lot of great content has started out there just as, well, I think this is funny and yeah. let's see if anyone else does. Mm -hmm. And it's taken exactly. off to be huge and has a massive audience. And then the, all the stuff on the back end that, comes of it right all all the extra work that the, the the little details and maybe benefits that come with uh mm -hmm. all that um but let me ask you a question xavier just to piggyback on that last uh question uh did you have any inspiration for going into this or did you have any inspiration uh from anybody else beyond your friend that might have motivated you uh prior to this um, like if I were to talk about big, big people or big influence right now, of course, like Caleb City, RDC World, but well, they do excellent skits. Um, streamers like Maximilian Dude, Gutter Magic, who is a friend of mine, they are people that have inspired me to stream because they are people that stream what they want to stream and still bring in a good audience. They're not streaming the mainstream games to try and get the hype right. viewers over. So those people specifically have helped me and inspired me to keep making content. So I know you like fighting games. I know you love Marvel versus Capcom, right? And I know you, I know, I know you love Maximilian. Um, is so let me, this next question leads me to, to, to want to ask, is there anything that most intrigues you when it comes to, uh, fighting games like UMVC three and Mortal Kombat? Like, 
you know, not the 3D ones, the 2D ones. What yeah. what what intrigues you most when it comes to those? So fighting games, people think it's just you know press a button, you punch, cut, you punch, kick, do special moves. Um, right. Yeah, I've I've adapted looking at fighting games more as an ever changing puzzle piece. So just like every, technology. Ev- yeah, everything everything is a puzzle because certain people, the way they play, they have certain patterns. You have to figure out those certain patterns. I press the right button, the right key to counteract or to win. And then it's the strategy behind it as well. You can't just go in there, you know, press a bunch of buttons and hope that you win. Right. And then get, and then get upset that you don't because you don't know what you're doing. I don't yet. know. I'm a, I'm a professional button masher. So I, <laughs> anyway, like that, that's just me. You know, <laughs> There is a space for that. There, there, there is a space for that. It's called dive kick. It's, it's two buttons. It's yeah. jump and kick. And it's called the big toe. Work. Yeah. Uh, can but, you compare where you are now to where you were back then when you first started playing fighting games? I mean, back when we were playing UMVC3, we were... We were in we were in the struggle city. It's <laughs> what we could say. The good old days of of working big lots for seven dollars an hour. Oh Lord, minimum wage, everybody. Minimum, minimum wage. wage. Like, oh my God, ex- at like fifteen hours, uh, fifteen Florida. hours a week, in Florida. Beautiful. But the ex- <laughs> the excitement that we had of I don't know if you remember going over to Reggie's house, just tournaments, up and just tournaments, hours and hours of just fighting each other, showing each other new stuff that we came up with. Um, just staying up late, just being like, hey, show me how to do this. Or, hey, this is what I figured out with this. Right. You know, as as desperate and as in need we were in those times, we still had a lot of fun and a lot of enjoyment because of things like video games. I think, Will, Will, what kind of fighting games did you play? Uh, I mean, I was more into like the WWE games, right? Because so, like, that's still fighting, essentially. Yeah, it, it's a different. Yeah. It was it was more simulated. It wasn't quite right. as much like strategy, like uh, Xavier was uh, saying. It was a lot more, you know, simulated. Like it was more of a sports game, like the right. 2K stuff. Yeah, and then of course uh, Malachi with Super Smash Brothers. You have been playing fighting games your whole life, pretty much. Real talk, real talk, honestly. Yeah, I played a little fighting games, but I didn't know absolutely shit. The real truth is when I met Xavier is when I actually learned the real technique, <laughs> like real patterns of fighting. I'm dead ass. Yeah, it's because I, me and him trained I, I so much it. in Super Smash Bros. We looked at YouTube videos and everything. I never did that when I was playing fighting games. It was him that made me did all that. Because yeah. after a while, you know, Xavier kept catching up, and I had to catch up better. So I had to freaking do the same thing he did for a it's long like, time. We, and then we find him that one night, one, next night that he comes one back day. better, and we're like, I, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I still remember that. I just and still that, remember. One day, that one day, yeah, me, you know, me and Malachi were Xavier playing made Dragon me change Ball. my style. <laughs> you know, me and we, oh yes, I really want to say Dragon something Ball. about that. Tim, you went upstairs while we could. Oh yeah, I remember. Tim was whipping my ass left and right. It was disgusting. Disgustingly whooping my ass. That was my disgusting. The next (laughs) day, the very next day, Tim came down and be like, hop on. It was literally the very next morning. They're like, hey, you want to get on? Literally, it was the. I'll whoop your ass again. It was annoying because freaking. Timmy was beating us, and you know how Timmy is with video games. He just starts oh. taunting you. He's like, you guys yeah. trash yeah. and stuff. And we looked at him as he was going to bed, and I looked back at Xavier. I was like, Xavier, we're going to practice all night, right? And he was like, yep. And then we looked at the YouTube videos, watched them for like literally Very hours. next morning, I got Saw my ass everything we demolished. Could do. <laughs> yeah, boy. We practiced all night, every step, every second. And then when we waited for you to wake up, he was like, yes, boy. Come back <laughs> today is your day to never play this game again. <laughs> we never do it. Yeah, we never touch the game after that. Xavier, between <laughs> Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Black Ops and that series, and yeah. just the rest of Call of Duty in general, what stands out as the most intense feeling for you of gratitude in, in the skills that you gained with that series? Oh, uh, back back in Call of Duty, because I was part of the uh, DHG community, which was a very big community, and it was 
it was it was a, <clears throat> a good a, an honor to be chosen to be one of their main players for their tournaments um and the tournaments weren't even a, a big deal like of course i was nervous i was um worried about how i'd perform against other top tier players i knew i wasn't the best i knew i was damn good but i just didn't know how i would compete with others but even then it's the i remember the single moment where a kid came up to me in in a, one of our lobbies and he's just like you're him i love watching you play and we'd have we'd have like baby versions of ourselves like there'd be a baby storm lord a baby um <laughs> just baby just like icon kids that wanted yeah kids that wanted to be our little proteges and i didn't have one and i didn't expect one and one kid came up and he's just like i want to be baby zevia i want to be baby zevia and i was just like oh yeah okay cool so it's the pressure of actually having fans yeah was a lot tougher than i thought it was going to be because there's so many people that are watching you and expecting greatness and especially with like, the skill level that you've got yeah yeah but and you you know how i how i was back in black ops and black right. ops 2 where i was just i i go through lobbies without dying i'd make sure i didn't die or i'd play competitive and you know, it was it was just a nightly grind till we right. had to get up three two three o'clock in the morning to go to the big like, <laughs> So like um, frequent nights. So I know that you you have frequented TwitchCon, yes. and you have traveled to the San Jose to the West Coast to uh, to chill out with the big wigs over there, mm -hmm. uh, to see the cosplayers and everything like that. Do you remember where you were uh, mentally, emotionally? Uh, during that time and when that was happening do you remember like could you explain to everybody how you felt during that time frequenting frequenting yeah. twitchcon yeah like for example my my first time going to twitchcon just i had such an excitement because i had never been to the west coast yet visiting california and it's then different. i got to, it's it's very different and then of course i got to meet my online friends who live on the west coast some even live in hawaii who we had to make time because they're six hours behind us right so you know finally seeing their faces and in person and actually hanging out with them was it was just sheer excitement and happiness to be around them and then being in twitchcon itself was just it's could just you being could you walk up. the audience <laughs> step by step from the moment you park to into twitchcon and what you're seeing <laughs> TwitchCon, there was no parking. <laughs> you hope you hope for an Airbnb. So that's step you, one. <laughs> and you walk, you walk there, or you get an Uber there. Um, <laughs> but honestly, you just see a bunch of people, just like yourself, meeting friends that they have known for years for the first time in person. You know, it's that's just beautiful. a gadget. beautiful it's, thing. It's a great. It's a beautiful thing. Just people happy to be there, happy to. Be surrounded by other people that have the same drive and initiative and goal that to make it as you know someone that streams games you know so twitchcon just more felt like an entire community back then than it did just an event an event yeah because right. everybody came together there everybody was there to see you know their favorite streamers their whoever's promoting what cosplayers game. yeah yeah the cosplay it was it it's honestly an experience i'd recommend anybody to go and do i like that is it true that uh that you were part of phase at one point <laughs> uh very shortly very very shortly can you explain to the audience how that was like what that was like um of course getting the email was just like yeah there's no way this is real i'm not <laughs> I'm not joining phase at all. Um, and then for there, getting a message like, yeah, no, like, come, this is <laughs> this is this great. is real. Uh, it, it's exciting. It's unbelievable that just playing with a lot of those people, you're just like, why? Why am I here? You know, <laughs> like I'm definitely not on this skill level, but everybody is. Everybody that's high up there in that skill bracket, well, for the majority, wants 
the competition. Nobody likes just right. going through and puffs up and they want to be challenged. They want to be, um, you know, threatened in a sense. Right. So if they see somebody with natural talent that is decent and that is good, they can be like, hey, instead of doing this, do this, this will be much better. And then they'll actually go against you. And when, you know, they see that you're doing good, you see them, you know, start leaning forward. Right, right. They're, they're like, like, hey, bro, right. wait, wait a second. <laughs> they're like, wait, 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 wait. hold on now. But, so, so fact or fiction? Uh, you jumped ship to Battlefield when Call of Duty started getting sour. No, 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 no. It was always a mix. I always played a little bit of Battlefield when I got into <laughs> Call of Duty, especially Battlefield Three. <coughs> um, it was just something about, Battlefield. <coughs> something about the sniping in Battlefield Three. I don't know if you remember Tim. Oh, I, I remember. had a little notebook. And oh, I, I remember. <laughs> and I had, I had every sniper coordinates. I had where to line up. I'm like, oh, he's that far away. That's about 300 meters. Let me just. All right, I need to Bring aim out here. my calculator. And, oh, right. Was, I, I just, oh my god. I 18, remember when when we all were playing Battlefield all at the same time. All four yeah. of us. Oh my god. That was still play Battlefield time. now. You guys don't play Battlefield. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when, yeah. when Battlefield goes free, you know that it's bad. You know. <laughs> Yeah. That that's all I gotta say. That, 2042. I'm not gonna say any. I'm not gonna talk shit about 2042. It's just it ain't it ain't even Battlefield Five it to be honest. <laughs> you know, it Battlefield bad. Five was, was it. shitty. It was not bad. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah true. I mean. Th- but then again, you do like to play Battlefront and games like that. You like EA in general. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I like big Battlefield games. Yeah. I hate um, that. Like, uh, like it, it's delaying. Sorry, but freaking, uh, I like big battlefield games. So I once heard, Mister Xavier, that you could beat anybody at Modern Warfare Three and Modern Warfare Two, as well as get a nuclear strike. That's a twenty-five kill streak. You know, confirm or deny. Do you know back in the day when uh, pub stomping was. You know, just in the blood. You know, you know the fingers are dusty. Haven't touched the controller Damn. for a while. Damn, um, <laughs> Father Time <laughs> comes for us all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the bones are creaking. I can't bend down without hearing a pop. Damn, uh, but no, there were times <laughs> where you know, they got old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in free for all, you you'd get a nuke in free for all. You'd leave, you drop it, leave the game, join the game back again. That's drop it, another, yeah. Drop another new <laughs> before the game ends. Um, 50 kills in a row. 50 kills in a row. You just, it, it's it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time I spent in front of a TV <laughs> and learning the maps where I could, I didn't even have to look. I would just, I know where cover is. I know where to be. I know how to flank it. It was a beautiful symptom just to have that control. Just to be able to be in that control and be like, that whole enemy of six to ten people over there, right? Don't even know what's about to happen. Right? <laughs> this group, this platoon, right, stay on the dead. subject. There was there was a time where I would always call the enemy spawn point my home, because that's where I would be, just in my house, killing the intruder. <laughs> Yo, staying on the subject, really, yo, like Timmy and Will, like, doesn't you two have any type of games that's like your pro games? And Timmy, don't say Resident Evil. You're not pro at Resident Evil. (laughs) (laughs) Please. I'll let Will answer first. Uh, Don't even say anything because we went through Resident Evil 5 not too long ago yesterday and he died like three times. I had to pick his ass up. (laughs) And don't even say anything to me. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's any games I ever got into like at that pro level to where it's just like I could do this one handed, I could do this with my eyes closed. Just I never, I never dedicated that amount of time to any one game. I just had I was always so much like, okay, I'm done with this one, on to the next one. There, there's and it's not <laughs> me, it's not me, but it's this is actually about Xavier. There is one game I know for a fact that he can relate to this. Uh, tap tap. 
on the phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> dedication. You want to see dedication? Watch that man play tap tap. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> with this fucking thumb, <laughs> it's <a> fucking amazing. <laughs> I like, forget that. that was like, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> how to do it with one. So you've been playing games for a very mm. long time since you were a child. You know, you've been playing fighting games. You play shooting games. You play adventure games, action <laughs> games. It doesn't matter. You play strategy. You never answered the question either. I don't. Uh, it's Resident Evil. So you, <laughs> you, uh, you play all these. <laughs> No. You play all these. Games. <laughs> you let me say mine, like you said. Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> you started that's all great, this buddy. time ago, like nearly Shit, two I was decades say Mario ago. Kart. <laughs> um, and now you're here trying to build a brand upon so many other things, including becoming a social media manager and marketer. You know that, like, understanding that side of branding as well and catapulting your own brand. Are you any closer to seeing your goal uh, from when you started, or are you in the same place? I would say I'm closer, but not where I want to be. Um, because it is an off and on type of journey that I am, especially with the job that I was working. Not, not, a, lot of, not a lot of free time to focus on content right. creation and streaming. Yeah. Um, but definitely, I see the potential that can be made. Um, right. Like the, the content that I posted does have traction. There are a bunch of people out there with the same humor as me. I can, I can reach out to people that I relate to. And I see the audience there. I just have to capitalize. So right. <clears throat> a lot of the focus is going to go into streaming. A lot of the focus is going to go into content creation because Ultimately, it is going to help further my career. Are you um, going to hop on the kick uh, trend? I don't think I am. Um, because it's it's very saturated right now. Everybody yeah. everybody is trying Everybody's to hop getting on, on it. Kick. Everybody's yeah. getting on it. And, um, you know. When that, since, yeah, when that happens. Twitch is going to counteract. And when Twitch counteracts, the people that went there are going to try and come back but people that stayed are you know they're gonna right rise they're gonna bloom exactly right. so i believe i'll stick i'll stick it out with twitch um even though they are not handling a lot of things correctly right now <laughs> at all that i do not agree with but ultimately i will stick it out because i i do see the potential they are still a, a good streaming platform how would you describe your ideal summer uh, at Davie, Florida, Palm Trace? Oh, my God. <laughs> Davie, Florida, Palm Trace. Jeez. <laughs> when we were back then, it was just out. With, everybody was out. We were riding skateboards. We were going to the pool. And you got to um, remember, at some point, that was before me in Malibu. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. definitely. Um, so except, describe to us your <clears throat> ideal summer. It was spent more with Lee. Lee was teaching us skateboarding. We would go to the pool, go to Lee's house, have fun with his family, playing video games. It was Halo. Halo 3 just came out back then. And we were looking for dead batteries to try and put in the Xbox <laughs> controllers because we just we needed a battery from somewhere, opening up controllers and remotes, trying try to suck whatever juice we can just to play each other in halo um no just the, the time with my friends solidified the my whole summer my the whole time of being in palm trees um just being that close to people was some of the fantastic time that i've had very good and finally which is a more hotly anticipated <laughs> event for you personally okay okay i remember the halo reach day Oh yeah, Halo Reach was Halo Reach was, was yeah. well. I I learned how to shoot heads because of Xavier from Halo, Halo. Reach. SWAT yeah, DMR <laughs> SWAT man. SWAT, That's man. Us. SWAT was the SWAT. Best. When you shoot in the body, for people who aren't familiar yeah, with SWAT, when you shoot them in the squad. body, it's a zero damage. They only get damage when you shoot them in the head. So if you like just load into someone's body, all they gotta do is just look at your head, shoot you, and you're dead. Boom. Easy. 
Easy. It got you so really good annoying. at headshots. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, what, really annoying being... going to save it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the training was insane. The training was insane. Um, with that being said, <laughs> what's a more hotly anticipated event for you? CES, the annual CES, or E3? Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna recently now, I'm gonna lean more to CES because E3. E3 used to be the gathering, you know, yeah. Sony, Xbox, Nintendo, Steam. That was the mm-hmm. gathering. That's where everybody... Sorry to interrupt you guys. I'll be back and you go to the bathroom. Okay. okay. Um, that was the gathering of all the spearheads of the gaming community coming together and be like, this is what we have. This is what we have. This is what we have. Now E3 is just like, hey, here are these games. And then you have Nintendo Direct and it's like, oh, right. Here are these games, and then they have the Sony conference, the Xbox yep. conference, where they want to start throwing their stuff. And all the kingdoms have been separated. It's, it's <laughs> all separated, and I, I understand why because it gives each company their time, a longer time, to show the community, the gaming community, what they're having to offer. But I just miss where everybody came together in E3. It doesn't. If you're a Sony head, if you're Xbox head, everybody. It was a communion was, of was, the exactly. biggest brains. And then it gave everybody the opportunity that if they're an Xbox guy to be like, oh, Sony's doing that. That's nice. Mm. Or Nintendo's doing that where they would have never looked at in that direction right. at all. And same for <clears throat> any of the other, other um, communities. Right. To where now I'm just you can be like oh the, the Nintendo directs today yeah, yeah I don't need to see it because I, I let it, uh Will right before our last podcast what did I what was I doing I was watching uh, Capcom the Capcom right show. you were updating us on what was going <laughs> on with that event what a shitty Capcom showing 37 <laughs> minutes and no Resident Evil what the fuck anyways of course uh, you're <laughs> mad about that <laughs> yeah uh but with that being said so. You've been doing this, right? Mm-hmm. Here you are, Xavier, in, in all your glory, um, reflecting on the past, reflecting on all the skills that you've gained and everything uh, that comes with that industry and electronics and technology and software, right? What, in your opinion, is the best part of sitting at home with a friend and playing on split screen? Both Instead, instead of <laughs> online... <laughs> it's both the teaching opportunity, watching my friend get better, um, the competitiveness of playing your friend, especially if that's on the same level as you, or just just <clears throat> being together, showing your friend your favorite game. Right. Be like, hey, look how cool this is. Or, did you know you can do this? Or, here's the Lord of this. I bet you didn't know this. Cause, and I didn't. <laughs> uh, like, because remember, I'm a big... My favorite game of all time right now is Dark Souls. Like the, right. the, the, the Souls universe. There's no story mode. There's no story mode. There's no story mode. It, they just start you they're off. Just, they're like, hey, you're this character. Go kill God real quick. Right. And then, and then you, and you just gotta go do that. You know? Real quick. They're, just, yeah, they're like, hey, I don't know you. You don't know me. Go, don't get go hit. kill some demigods real quick. <laughs> right. But, and, you know, the first time you go, you just go in through blind. You, you're just following whatever you have to do, just following this linear path. But then you start reading item descriptions. And then you realize, yeah. hey, there there actually is something behind the scenes and something in depth. That right, was there's thought a skill of. behind this. There's a, yeah, there's a reason why you're doing this. There's a reason why this enemy is here. Or there's a reason why this NPC is here and is able to sell you this. Kind, and- kind of like behind the wall lore. Yeah, you know? like they're, yeah. they're not in your face telling you like, hey, this is what happened. Here's the story. They're like, yeah. hey, uh, here you are. <laughs> and if you find these notes, that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a beautiful experience because one, it makes you want to play it again and be like, wow, right. I'm, 100%. I'm here because of this and this happened. Or I know that this person has this armor because so and so happened back whenever this happened. And you know, the environments of there was this war that's, you know, it's not just a torn down castle because right. it just looked like a cool torn down castle. No, there is a war here. Um, so 
a lot of like Dark Souls and uh, Elden Ring that I've been playing a lot recently. Showing those to my friends and be like, "Hey, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Here's the lore behind this. This is the when when why. I watched you play Dark Souls three and you didn't get hit for forty five minutes straight and you just kept walking forward. <laughs> that blew my fucking mind. Uh, Will actually, this this is a good question to piggyback with you, mm-hmm. uh, being that you're big into the wrestling games. <clears throat> how was it for you, like going from you know? being mostly split screen or with somebody in the room to then going strictly online? Uh, It was always kind of different because, I mean, at least in the, when I was doing it, there was interaction with a person who was sitting next to you. Right. Like, you know, you're trying to do something all get over here, you know, or go away. Like there was like physical interaction now versus online. You know, you could talk as much crap as you want. I'm still going to hit you with everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, exactly. And Malachi, what about you? How how did going from split screen to online affect you? And stuff. Well, you remember back in the day, it was always me, you, and Xavier when he uh, joined us, you know. And uh, we used to play on play each other so many damn times. And most of the games we used to play were just uh, you know PvP games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So after a while. You, you remember I stopped playing video games because I just got tired of them. Because I thought every video game was just PvP online or just one player by yourself in a room right. and stuff in the dark, like Xavier is right now. But um I can feel that. Yeah. Yeah, but a freaking um it was destiny. That made me jump back on video games completely. And you remember how it was in Destiny Worlds. And one, I was like oh, yeah. Xavier. There was no one touching me. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't dying at all. I Destiny was, was I know, was I was so good at Destiny. Turning points. I know, I don't know why. Like, I, as soon as I jumped on that game, I fell in love with it. And I freaking was so good. Me or my f- online friends back in Destiny Fun, we would, did a raid. And there was a part where all these robots come down, but if you went in the back, they wouldn't shoot you. So all my friends went in the back, but I was still there killing every single robot that was coming down. And my friends was like, yo, Malika, come back. And they were just watching me. I was like, boom, boom, boom. And they was like, oh, Jesus Christ. And I was like, just killing every single one. Not one of them touched me. And they're like, Jesus Christ, go, Malika, go. And, stuff. And, I, and they were just sitting in the back just watching. They wasn't doing a damn thing. They wasn't shooting. They wasn't helping me and everything. And it was, like, pretty fucking fun back in those days. Back then, I used to play with pros. Me and those pros used to jump down raids, just the three of us. It was just to be me, another friend I used to know named Hector, and another friend and stuff. And, it was, and I used to be the hunter. They used to be the other ones, warlock, titans. And we used to never get touched. We killed every single one, never died once. I remember <laughs> uh, Destiny 2 from... from- uh, we all know about Destiny 2, Malika. You don't have to tell us. <laughs> but, uh, fucking no, Destiny, Destiny 2 is much, much fucking harder. Yeah. De- Destiny, 2 is, harder. Destiny 2 is expansive. It's explosive. But going from split screen to mm. online was never a problem for me because I always played single player games, you know? Devil mm. May Cry, Resident Evil, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy. You name it, I'll never have you play with me. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it was. Uh, <laughs> Xavier, removing yourself, removing yourself from business, how, if at all, did doing all that you do with games and now obviously heading into social media, helping businesses grow, uh, how does that affect your own personal enjoyment of doing what you do? Like, on I mean, your off time, you know? I mean, off time, it's, you know, it's always been the same, spending time with my friends, playing games here and there um and then doing a lot of doing a lot of research um a lot of especially coming into this role i found myself having to learn new things which i'm always open to i always love learning about a new way to to approach certain situations or how to handle, handle anything so it all problem solver yeah 
and I've always I've always been a problem solver. That's what I've always liked to do. So it's it's one of those situations where you if you like what you do, it's not really working. Right. It's, it's all, never it's never work if you if you enjoy it every step of the way. Right. And it's something that I've I'm doing regardless. It's what I've always been doing. So it it's not so much I haven't really had time or seen a time where I'm just like, oh, I don't feel like doing this today. You would you know, say your work and your yeah. hobbies are congruent. Yeah, they're they're merging. Yeah. They're that, merging that's, very well. You actually have a gift, man. That is a special, special thing. It's not a lot of us can say like I were I, I have worked and I'm going to work in real estate again. And that's, you know, it's not the most exciting thing. You know, <laughs> you know, you got to find a passion for it. And, you know, I, I find those passions for it. But um, it, it's been an amazing journey, not only for us, the three of us on the show, as well as you, Xavier, having you here, but also through your career to bring things full circle. Uh, I mean, staying up late and practicing on YouTube, watching those YouTube videos just to beat my ass, you know, to, to things like understanding, um, you know, how to train someone in how to play Call of Duty a little bit better uh, to even switching between platforms and different kind of games and then eventually helping other people understand how to do what you do. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious with all that and, and all that and beyond. <laughs> I'm curious, is there a skill that you've learned over the course of your career that's been the most valuable or transferable to your everyday life? And what is it? Oh, uh, just like you said, when it comes to teaching, when it comes to coaching, when it comes to introducing people to your games um just the learning the massive amount of patience of this person is not me they're not going to play the game <laughs> the way that i play the right. game. right so like that oh. frustration yeah of watching somebody play your game and be like why the hell are you doing it that way you idiot do it this way and be like no 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 they don't know. <laughs> they don't know what you know. Yeah. Let, let, let them be instead of don't snap them. their neck. <laughs> no, I'm Tim. You were actually one of the first people to experience. Remember what? Yeah, I, I know. You, what every, I called every you day. <laughs> hey, get the combo right, Tim. Come on, you got this. You know, and it's and just to just to comment on what you said. You know, patience. That that's yeah. truly a powerful skill. And with all that you do, I can see that you're a master of patience. You know. Yeah. So look at you, Xavier Adams. You definitely are Sh not, Timmy. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not. But look at you, Xavier Especially Adams. Especially when I showed you us, in Super Smash Bros. And never right. Finish. Showing us uh, what's popping in technology and opening up to the, the WP crew. And we appreciate you for that. Here you are. Now's the time. Nothing left to do. The floor is yours to the audience. Let them know what's going on right now in your life and how they can find you. All right, guys. Um, so pretty much all my user handles are Xevia. That's X-Z-E-V-I-A. Um, if you can't find me there, just add a 22 because I, I add 22s on there for some reason. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I keep it professional. Um, pretty much any <laughs> major... Any major social media platform, you can also find me on Twitch under Xevia minus the 22. There's no 22 on there. Um, and, you know, I'm open to any messages, anybody that has any questions. I'm all about expanding and helping people get to where they want to be. So if there are any questions, if there are any guidance that you need, if there's any help, please reach out. And I answer all my messages. That's beautiful. I love that. That is that is truly uh, truly awesome because after after all of this is said and done, what a show, guys! Xavier Adams. All right. <laughs> all Thank right. Thank you for having me. Technically, the show is done, right? I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to press the end record <clears throat> button, right? I'm going to ask you what you thought of the show, Xavier. What'd you think? No, oh, it's fantastic. Uh, conversations grow went well. It flew rapidly. There were never any dry spots. I appreciate so that. It's a it's, uh, <laughs> very interactive i liked it thank you thank you that uh that really thanks really for being on good. yeah of course. um of course. so i'm just gonna i'm gonna hit a, a real small plug real quick and close this out so everybody mute their mics here we i got go. you
What if I told you there was more of where this came from? That's right. A whole boatload of awesome guests, amazing questions, and even better answers. So make sure you guys are following everybody in this episode on social media at their handles listed in the description below. And if you want to come say hi to us and hang out with us, uh, please join our official Discord listed in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this episode of What's Poppin', Go ahead and hit the like button. If you guys have not yet, then please, please, please subscribe. Whether or not this is your first time with us or your returning audience, okay? So also smash the subscribe button, uh, uh, the notification bell so you never miss a beat. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. This is not possible without you. Hit one of those two boxes right below to view our latest video and the other one to explore more episodes from the what's poppin podcast everybody good night